As we mentioned before, the resolution is finally adopted after 141 countries are in favor, including Indonesia. The countries that are against the resolution are Belarus, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea or North Korea, Eritrea, Mali, Nicaragua, the Russian Federation and Syrian Arab Republic. Meanwhile, the 32 countries that voted to abstain included China, Cuba, Ethiopia, India, Iran, Laos, Pakistan, South Africa and Sri Lanka. Now, we've heard so many highlights, and we're going to get to that as well. And as I've mentioned before, today, the 24th February marks one year of the war in Ukraine. But there's still no sign of peace, despite calls for resolutions from heads of states multiple times. And here is a brief summary about the conflict on one year in Ukraine. <laughs> February 24, 2023 marks one year of Russia's military operation in Ukraine. Until February 15, 2023, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, or UNHCR, recorded more than 18.5 million Ukrainians leave the country to seek refuge to the neighboring countries. As per February 12 this year, the Office of United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights or OHCHR also recorded 7,199 fatalities from civilians, 438 among them were children. The conflict also left 11,756 others injured. From the military sides, it is predicted that more than 100,000 soldiers from each side were dead and wounded. Russia began their military operation during the early day on February 24, 2022 by deploying around 200,000 soldiers and later invading northern, southern and eastern Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he decided to launch the operation after feeling threatened by Ukraine, following Ukraine's plan to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO. He then used the operation to demilitarize and denazificate Ukraine, protecting his fellow Russians. A number of facilities have become the targets of the operations. These include nuclear power plants in Zaporizhia and Chernobyl, residential area and school building in Shanhibe and Irpin, Holocaust Museum and Television Tower in Kyiv. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky then began to make a move. Zelensky has been calling for no-fly zone over Ukraine in an emotional plea to NATO. NATO, however, decided to reject the call, saying they're not part of the conflict. NATO feared that an attempt to enforce no-fly zone would inevitably escalate the ongoing conflict. Всі бояться, не відповідають, а ми не боїмось. Не боїмось, захищаючи нашу державу. Ми не боїмось Росії. Ми не боїмось говорити з Росією. Ми не боїмось говорити про все. Про гарантії безпеки для нашої держави. Не боїмось говорити про нейтральний статус. Ми ж зараз не в НАТО. Але які при цьому у нас будуть гарантії? І найголовніше, які конкретно країни Нам їх дадуть. Зеленський also called for military aids from the US and Europe, along with their allies. The aids could be weapons, combat drones, anti-aircraft missiles, anti-tanks, or air defense systems. US and NATO member countries accepted Zelensky's request, while also initiating moves to prevent further impacts of the operation. Moves include imposing sanctions against Russian President Vladimir Putin and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, banning Russia from global financial system, freezing Russia's asset and transaction, and prohibiting Russian oligarch from using their financial assets to the market. We commit to ensuring that a certain number of Russian banks are removed from SWIFT. 
This will ensure that these banks are disconnected from the international financial system and harm their ability to operate globally. They also cut oil, natural gas and coal imports from Russia to European Union, US, UK and Germany. The sanctions, however, affected the global economy. The soaring price of WTI and Brent crude oil has been getting worse due to the conflicts between Russia and Ukraine. In the other side, Russia hit back by cutting natural gas and crude oil supply to those who support Ukraine. The price of Brent crude oil was at 92.89 US dollars per barrel last year, while the WTI was at 90.94 US dollars per barrel. The prices reached their peak on March 2022, where Brent crude oil prices were at 133.09 US dollars per barrel and the WTI was at 129.40 US dollars per barrel and still over $100 per barrel until July last year. Russian military operation had also affected global food supply, especially wheat. The price increased really high until 12.53 US dollars per bushel on March last year, making it the highest increasing price for the last 14 years after global crisis in 2008. Corn price also increased to 7.75 US dollars per bushel. This also became the highest price of the two commodities since 2012. Trying to solve the issue, world leaders then came and had talks with Zelensky in Ukraine. There were Polish Prime Minister Muteusz Morawiecki, Czech Republic Prime Minister Peter Fiala, former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Germany Councillor Olaf Scholz, French President Emmanuel Macron, and US President Joe Biden. Biden stated that US still maintained their commitment to the democracy, sovereignty, and Ukraine's territorial integrity. Biden also pledged some 500 million US dollar worth of new military aid. Together, we've committed nearly 700 tanks and thousands of armored vehicles, 1,000 artillery systems, more than 2 million rounds of artillery ammunition, more than 50 advanced launch rocket systems, anti-ship and air defense systems, all defend you to defend Ukraine. Taking a different move with other leaders, Indonesian President Joko Widodo, as the first Asian leader going to Ukraine in June 2022, offered himself to President Zelensky as a mediator. Saya tetap sampaikan pentingnya penyelesaian damai dan spirit perdamaian tidak boleh pernah luntur. Dalam kaitan ini, saya menawarkan diri untuk membawa pesan dari Presiden Zelensky untuk Presiden Putin yang akan saya temui segera. Helps also come from the World Bank that gave some aids in the form of loans, guarantees, parallel financing and grants worth for 723 million US dollars. The financing of recovery from economic emergency in Ukraine aimed to help Ukrainian government run their key public services, pay medical manpower salary, pension fund, and social program. In October 2022, the World Bank handed over an additional aid of 530 million US dollars worth of reconstruction and development. We've dispersed so far. 11 billion dollars to Ukrainian government uh, uh, and there'll be another 500 million, uh, 530 million by the end of this month that, that is enabled by a guarantee from the UK government and also by assistance from Denmark. So uh, countries, many countries are participating in the uh, channeling of resources to Ukraine. Sadly, there has been no sign of peace between Russia and Ukraine seen yet. If that happens, the world is on the verge of further inflation, as well as energy and food crisis. And to give you the highlights of casualties due to the war, we'd like to present you with some data information updated up to um, February 2023. So since the Russian operation in Ukraine started on February 24, 2022, up to February 12, 2023, 
UNHCR recorded 18,955 civilians that are affected. Of that number, 7,199 people were killed and 1,756 people injured. Now, of those who were um, died, there were 2,888 that are adults males, 1,941 adult females, and 226 male teenagers, 180 female teenagers, and 32 children. And there are 1, 000, more than 1,941 adults females, and also um, of which authorities have yet to determine how many were men and how many were women. Now, from 11,756 injured, 2,616 are adult males, more than 1,800 are adult females, 241 male adolescents, and more than 250 are female adolescents, as well as 260 children. You can imagine how many children is there. It, uh, it runs more than 200 up to today. And meanwhile, 6,430 are adults, of which authorities have also yet to determine how many were men and how many were women. We can imagine how um, complicated the situation on the ground so that the authorities cannot determine the sex of the victims as of today. And as for victims in areas controlled by Russia and armed groups affiliated with Russia, we can see that 510 people are killed and 1,711 are being injured. And this is the areas controlled by Russia, not including areas that is controlled by the Ukrainian government. But in other regions of Ukraine, which was under the government control, the death toll reached 8,788 people, of whom 3,010 were killed and 5,700 people were injured. But the UNHCR also stated that the data may be differ because it's still being updated constantly and cross with findings on the field and it is really really hard to determine and pinpoint how many casualties on the ground because um, you know um, each area may result um, in different um, numbers of victims and the um, speed of recording of how many casualties is also different from one area to another as for the cost however, cost, however, according to the German Institute of Economics, the war cost 1.6 trillion US dollars in 2022. This is very costly for war in a modern era. And the study also showed that global production losses, which could amount to around 1 trillion US dollars in 2023. And you know that the impact of the war doesn't only affect the two countries involved, which is Russia and also Ukraine, but it also involves many aspects globally from supply chain, from energy, and uh, the accessibility of um, many um, you know, commodities in the world. And it affects almost every country in the world. Now I'd like to give it to Ranga to uh, I think continue the uh, the news and this is the data that we've got so far about the number of casualties, uh, both death and injured, and people affected in uh, the war involving two countries. Ranga. Right, it's catastrophic. Yeah. This this one year has been for pretty much everyone, but especially the people in Ukraine.